So welcome to a video on 2019 question C3, surface geometry by Bob Connell. Okay, so we figure C3 um, down below here, elevation and end view, or end elevation, and on the right we have a building retail store in Singapore, all right, um, with a regular shaped faces, steel framed uh, glass. Um, part A, we've draw the given elevation plan and end elevation. We have very little dimensions for end elevation, only one, so we're going to construct the elevation plan and then the end elevation. Um, and we have the dimensions as shown, and all we need is a what you call it this pink line here to complete this line in plan. We'll use that line and that distance there. Then, so um, I'll give you a quick what you call it um, 3D view of the object. So, this is what the object is looking like in three dimensions, and then part A, the elevation. Okay, it'll be projected onto the vertical plane. So that's what it looks like in elevation, the object. So you can see surface A, the pink surface will appear as an edge in elevation. And then the surface on the right hand side, I uh, can't see it there with the um, end vertical plane, but that gold surface appears as an edge. The plan, okay, projected onto the horizontal plane. So the plan is looking like this here. Um, there we go, I don't know why the color has gone off. The end elevation, there's the color back up. Then the end elevation is going to look like that there. Uh, the hidden detail. So a portion of surface C there will appear as hidden. Uh, So now to draw the end elevation, uh, it has to be on the right hand side as we're looking from the left. Um, I'm going to draw in my YY line, bring my points over, bring them up to 45 degrees, or you can just use 45 degrees from this uh, end corner of the elevation. Then the dihedral angle. So for the dihedral angle, I'll have to see uh, this line here as a point. Uh, now, a, on a drawing sheet, you have to see it as um, a true length first. Um, um, before you look along it in 3D, you can immediately look along it. So when you look along this line of intersection, you see, okay, surface uh, B and surface A, they're going to appear as edges, and the line of intersection will appear as points. So you can see two surfaces appearing as edges. Um, now, so they'll appear as edges. So the next part of the question, I have to see the dihedral angle between surface B and surface A. So surface A is appearing as an edge there. So I need to see the line one, three as a point. Now to see a line as a point, I need to look along its true length. 
is it already a true length? No, because it's not parallel to the XY line in either elevation or plan, so it's not a true length. So I'm going to have to look perpendicular to line one, three. Okay, I can do it in either plan or elevation. I'm, I'm going to do it in, in plan, and then I'm going to look along its true le uh, uh, length. So I'm going to take an auxiliary elevation looking perpendicular to line one, three, and then I'm going to look along the true length of the line of intersection. So to find the dihedral angle, as I said, I'm going to look along the true length of that line three one. Okay, so that's the second auxiliary. So I'm going to project all the points parallel to line one three and take the distances from the x one y one line back. Now I've just noticed for as I am about to do this, the next part of the question, I left myself kind of no room to find the true shape down here using a rebatment. And um, so for doing the true shape surface B, I'm just going to have to project it up onto a different area of the page. So that is going to conflict like what you might see in the marking scheme um, for that year conflict plus in the marking scheme they don't project it off the elevation to find the true length of uh, line 1 to 3. You still get the same dihedral angle. To find the true shape of surface C, we're going to look along that line there on surface C, okay, and then we'll see um, surface C as an edge when we do that, because when, uh, a line on surface C will disappear as a point. Then what we're going to do is rotate the surface down until it's onto the horizontal plane, the X1, Y1 line, and then we shall see the true shape of surface A. So that's the true shape of surface A. Then for surface B, I'd intended to do a, a similar thing by doing a rotation. Now, unfortunately, I didn't leave enough space on my sheet as I done it. So I was intending to look along this line here and see uh, surface B as an edge and rotating surface B down until it's onto the X1, Y1 line, and you would get the true shape of surface B. So what I actually had to do was a rebatment where I just put what you call it the true shape of surface B just up further up, up the page. Uh, a projector off plan now um, this line and this line here are parallel they're both equal and this is both these two lines are true lengths in your rebatment you have this true length here in the true shape of surface c um, and you have the true length of that line for your auxiliary for your dihedral angle on your sheet um, because you have to see it as a true length so that's i'll put the true shape of my surface b up on the top of the sheet so part so part uh, C, I have to find the true shape of surface C and B first. So first I'm going to find the true shape of surface C. Now, okay, I'm going to do this by rotating the surface down until it's, what you call it, um, onto the flat on the horizontal plane. So I'm going to look along the surface, uh, or this line 7, 8 on surface C. 7, 8 is on XY line elevation, so it's a true lending plan. When I look along that, the surface will appear as an edge. Okay, and then I'm going to rotate the edge on its own until it's on the X1, Y1 line in the auxiliary elevation and project back to plan and it's going to be a true shape in plan then.
So these arcs in plan appear as lines perpendicular to the forward line 7, 8. So if the surface is being rotated around line 7, 8, that appears as a point here in the auxiliary elevation. So these arcs have to appear as lines in plan perpendicular to the forward line 7, 8. And I'm going to bring these uh, two new points of 6 and 5 on the horizontal plane down to plan. <laughs> So to find the true shape of surface B, I was going to use rotation, like I said at the start of the video, by looking along line 37, which is the true length, and rotating the surface parallel to the X1 and Y1 line, but I don't have enough review, so, or room. So what I'm going to do is find the true shape using rebatment, okay, and I'm going to position it up here, and it's similar to rotation, it just skips this step. Um, in rebatment, you use the knowledge that every line, okay, on a true shape is a true length. Now, 3 to 7 is a true length, because 3 to 7, uh, 3 to 7 is a true length plan, because 3 to 7 is on X, Y line elevation. You have the true length of 1 to 3 in your auxiliary elevation for your dihedral angle, and you have the true length of um, 7 to 5, in the true shape of surface C, okay, and the forward lines have to be perpendicular to the hinge line 3, 7. So I'm going to use just existing dimensions to find the true shape. So I'm going to look um, perpendicular to 3, 7. Essentially, well, I won't say that, look perpendicular to it, that's slightly wrong. I'm going to project um, the points perpendicular to 3, 7 is what I want to say. Three and seven here, the hinge line. Okay, and then might need to move projection lines up a little bit. Um, at least three and one for five. Now I'm going to take the true length of one to three down here. I'm going to swing from number three, or sorry, that projection line should come from number one. Okay. So there's point number one. Then I'm going to take the true length of 7 to 5 down the true shape. So 7 to 5 down the true shape and swing from 7 up here. That's 5. D, find the traces of this plane that contains surface um, B. All right, so here's the plane that contains the surface uh, B. And what you're being asked is to find where does that intersect the uh, vertical plane and the horizontal plane. That's what you're being asked to find. Okay, so, um, I guess, no. so here's a portion of that plane uh, that contains surface B. Here's the lines of intersection, the vertical trace and the horizontal trace. So the horizontal trace is on the bottom line of surface B because the base of surface B touches the XY line elevation, so that has to be a part of the HD. And then to find the VT, so this is the VT here, this line, so to find that in elevation, in 3D we're going to draw a line parallel to the HT from one any one of the points on surface B. So this red line is going to be uh, parallel to the HT in plan, so that's the plan view, that, that line there is the plan view of that one, and it's parallel to the HD in plan. So where it hits the X, Y line elevation, we're going to bring it straight up. We're going to bring it straight up and then we're going to go across from the point in elevation parallel to the X, Y line because the HD is on the X, Y line in elevation. So parallel lines are parallel in every orthographic view and where those two red lines intersect there, that's your VT, that's the point in VT. So, so it looks like then in 3D. So part D, find the traces of the plane that contains surface B. Right, so 3 to 7 is on the XY line elevation. So that means 3 to 7 is um, on the horizontal trace. The horizontal trace is the line where the um, surface intersects the horizontal plane. So I can extend 3 to 7 in plan until it hits the X1, Y1 line. So it goes on for a long while. Now, to find the vertical trace, as done in the SOLIDWORKS model at the start, parallel lines are parallel in every orthographic view. So I'm going to draw a line parallel to the HT from a point, any point on surface B. So I'm going to pick number one. It doesn't matter if you go from number five. Okay, so I drew a line in plan parallel to the HT. Okay, now, where it hits the XY line, okay, I'm going to go um, straight above it. So I'm 
I'm going to draw upwards. Draw in these ways. Now, the HT, okay, touches the horizontal plane, so the HT has to be on the XY line elevation. And parallel lines are parallel in every orthographic view. So if this line coming from number one is parallel to the HT in elevation, it has to be parallel to the XY line in elevation. So from number one, I'm going to draw a horizontal line, and that's a point on the VT, the vertical trace, okay, and then I can go back to T here, okay, and join them up there. And that's the vertical trace there, and that's the horizontal trace.